a welcome back to my channel. For those that are new here, my name is Kayla. And if you're returning to my channel, welcome back. So in today's video, I'm super excited to share with you this project that my husband and I did together. Um, we created a really cute house bed for our daughter or monastery bed, I guess, depending on what you like to call it. Um, now, since we gave our daughter's crib to our little baby boy, we wanted to make sure our daughter had a bed to sleep in. Now, instead of us buying something for her, we just thought it would be fun and cool to create something for her so she can feel a little special, especially when I took all the time and effort to put a little cute nursery together for my little baby boy. And if you have not checked that video out, I'll be linking that up on the cards above and as well down below in the description box. So I just wanted to do something for her to make her feel special and to know that we love her just as much as this little boy. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump into the video. So you're gonna need about eight to 10 two by fours. Um, if you want to make railing, then you're gonna need 10. We only picked up eight because we didn't add any railing to the bed, as well as you're gonna need about four two by twos as well. Um, right here, we just tried to pick out the nicest ones that we could find. Before you start carding any of the lumber and all that, make sure you're wearing your safety glasses and gloves while sanding and cutting your lumber. So right here, I started off by measuring um, all the lengths that I'm gonna need to create the bed frame. Now, I just marked off where I needed to create my cut, and then I use this triangle ruler to make a straight line from top to bottom so I can make sure when I do cut the wood it's a nice straight line for me to guide the saw along. Now my husband used this handheld saw. Now you can use a table saw as well if you have one but a handheld saw will work just as fine. Now some of the wood pieces you're going to have to create 45 degree angles. This is going to be for the roof peaks for the house bed. Now you're going to go ahead and cut all of the lumber pieces that you're going to need for the whole entire bed frame and then go ahead and sand each piece. After that, this is the type of system that my husband and I did. He cut the lumber, all of the pieces that created the whole entire bed frame and then I sanded the whole each cut um, all around from each edge, um, every side, making sure that there's no rough pieces of wood or anything sticking out, especially because this is for a child's bed. So you want to make sure your wood is nice and smooth uh, and does not have any splinters on it. So these are the, going to be the cuts that you're going to need to create this bed. I will be linking all of them down below in the description box as well. So you can take a look at that. For this project, it's a good idea to invest in this Craig's pocket hole jig. This thing is super cool. It comes with everything you need to create a angled pocket hole um, and you can adjust it depending on how wide and how angled you want it and it also comes with a drill bit so um, I, you're gonna use this tool to create all of the pocket holes along the whole entire bed I will be linking that that down below in the description box so you know exactly where to place these pocket holes um, this just makes it a lot easier for you to take notes on it um, instead of telling me exactly where to place them in the video. So in case you're wondering where to place these pocket hole jigs, all of that will be down below in the description box. So 
So this is what it looks like after you create your pocket holes. It just makes a nice little pocket for your screws to go in. It makes all of your building projects look super professional. Um, like if you bought it directly from the store. I think this thing is so cool. It was a good investment that my husband and I purchased to add to our tools. Now here I'm adding two pocket holes on the two longest pieces of the bed frame, which is the base. Um, and you see that I'm putting um, two pocket holes on each end so you can connect both of the footboard and headboard of the bed together. Now for the three two by twos, you're going to put pocket holes on either end and as well as you're going to add another two sets of pocket holes on the opposite side. This just in here is that your rooftop of the bed is going to be nice and stable especially because the wood is a lot skinnier so right here i'm just showing you how to put together the footboard and headboard to the bed now it's best to lay out all your pieces first and then this is how you put the rooftop on to either for the footboard and headboard on the bed as well making sure that all of your pocket holes are facing upward now, when you put the bed together, all of the pocket holes are going to be facing inward into the bed. So this, I'm just showing you that all of my pocket holes are facing outward, so you can go ahead and start drilling them in and connecting all of the pieces. So my husband and I use a combination of these two lengths of screws for this project. Now you're going to go ahead and create the headboard and footboard to this bed because all of the other pieces of wood um, are just going to be connecting your headboard and footboard together with either the rooftop or the base of the actual bed itself. And this is what the headboard and footboard would look like once you put them together. Now, like I said, the pocket holes are going to be facing inward into your bed frame. So they're not showing on the outside of the actual bed. And so right here, we are connecting one of the longest uh, two by fours, which is around seven to three inches long. Um, and we are connecting it at the bottom because these are the base to the actual bed frame. We repeated the same step on the other side of the headboard. And you just repeat this same exact process for the footboard of the bed. Now a good little trick when putting together the actual bed is to kind of start off drilling in your screws slightly like you see here. This just makes it a lot easier when you're actually putting the bed frame together. Now these two by twos are actually the rooftop to the house. So it just made it so much easier for us um, once we had the pieces up um, and screwing them in. So I totally suggest that you start off screwing in your screws like this and then finish off by drilling them in once you have the pieces together. So my husband and I placed this other two by two in the middle. It's around 14 and a half inches between the roof peak and the actual end of the triangle. Now we did this for safety purposes because our daughter loves to jump around and play. So we didn't want her to hurt herself, um, bump her head or anything like that. So we put it towards the middle of the bed and we just made sure everything was nice and level before we moved on to the next step. 
Now you see where we're placing this other two by two. We have it at the lower end of the actual triangle. Now you can do this on the opposite side of the bed as well. Um, now we, like I said, we just did it for safety purposes for our daughter so she wouldn't bump our head or anything like that. Now I'm marking off where we're going to place the other railing that's going to be on the footboard and headboard of this bed. It's around five inches above the last piece of wood. Now you can totally add this piece of wood to the actual headboard and footboard of the bed before connecting the two pieces together. So I plan on staining my daughter's bed. Now this is a cool little trick that you can use on any staining project. Now I used a damp cloth to treat the wood and wipe it down for a little bit and let it sit for about five seconds or so before adding the stain. The water kind of mimics using pre-stain, but you don't have to purchase anything because water is free. Um, this just makes sure that you can get a nice even coat of the stain. Um, without it looking blotchy or anything. So I used two different blocks just to show you the difference between using a little bit of water and no water. And as you can see over here with no water, it's kind of blotchy and uneven. And over here with the water, it's nice and smooth and even color all around. So this is the color that I used to stain my daughter's bed. Now you can totally paint the bed frame as well, any color you like. And as you can see, I use the damp cloth on the piece of wood that I'm working on first and making sure that every edge and piece of the house was nice and covered before adding the stain. And like I said, I let the water sit there for about five seconds before adding the actual stain. And I just repeated all of these same exact steps around the whole entire bed until the whole bed was stained from top to bottom. This is what the bed frame looks like with one coat of stain on it. I absolutely love how it turned out. It looks so beautiful. It just brings out all of the texture in the wood and it brings a lot of warmth to my daughter's bedroom. I wanted to make sure that the stain and the wood um, was protected. So I added some polyurethane to the bed frame. Now I used a brush to apply the polyurethane around the whole entire bed. Um, this just protects the wood and gives it a nice little shine to it so it lasts longer and it keeps all of your stain projects looking really nice and looking professional. Now I just made sure I used even strokes around the whole entire bed and made sure that there was no runoffs of this polyurethane because it is very runny so you do have to kind of work very fast and it dries super fast too as well. So I added about two coats around the whole entire bed, giving it a whole 24 hours before adding the second layer to it. Even though it dries super fast, I just wanted to make sure that it was completely dry before adding another layer of the polyurethane to the bed. This is what the polyurethane looks like on your bed once you apply it to the stained piece of wood. It looks so pretty and I love the little shine that it adds to that bed frame. It just brings the bed to life. Now all the measurements for this bed will fit a twin size mattress in it. 
And as you can see here, a uh, twin size mattress will fit nice and snug inside the bed frame without it shifting and moving all around. Now you know how easy it is to create a super nice house bed for your child, whether it's for a little girl or boy, just depending on how you style it after you build it. Now, if this video was very inspirational to you and if you really enjoyed watching it, please give it a big old thumbs up. And if you absolutely love DIY projects such as this, please subscribe to my channel and also hit that little bell so you know each and every time I upload a video. So with all that said, until next time, y'all have a wonderful day. Bye. <laughs> Monastery bed, I guess it just depends on where you're from. I like to call it a house bed because it looks like a house. No. Okay. A bed that you can get from the Stonor. Stonor, woo. That's a cool word. Okay, anyways, DIY projects like this. So, yeah. Each and every time I up a little video, up a little video. Mm. On all this little effort and hard time, hard time. Nope. Oh man. My back is hurting. I feel like an old person. Okay. All right. Mm. Mm.